how I approach it. Now what we're going to do is put it into a more realistic type of a situation. Like a, um, I'm going to show you an actual lick where I, I use all those techniques, but I'm going to go all the way down the neck and use the whole neck and all the positions. You know, earlier we learned the pentatonic positions. So here, this is going to show you how to go all the way across the neck, staying within the pentatonics. <laughs> So far, I've showed you all this pentatonic stuff, um, and I've been trying to stick, you know, with the notes that are in the pentatonic scale, just because that's kind of what we're dealing with here. But in a real musical setting, you, you know, you don't you don't play like that. You don't sit and say, "Okay, I'm just going to use you know this scale." At least you shouldn't be playing like that. So um, I'm going to show you like a, an example of how I might, you know, incorporate that in a solo uh, with other passing tones and, and that sort of thing. So I'm going to play like a, a lick that utilizes all those techniques and then I'll slow it down and demonstrate it for you so then you'll be able to really see, you know, see it in action. All right, we're going to start off in this position. So that's like the front of the lick, and then we go into this sort of, and here's the key part where we slide down. And we're doing that sort of, and we're in there doing that sort of grouping, and that's a, a different pentatonic shape. So. We're already incorporated two of the pentatonic positions. And then we slide down. So we're utilizing this. Then we're in here. Then we come down. instruments um, that was sort of spawned out of necessity you know like I said before uh, you know where I lived I was I was too far from the city to walk to somebody's house uh, you know to necessarily get you know other music to get into the network so I, I would sort of uh, when I made my recordings on my floor track I would have to do everything on my own so I would uh, play the drums and play a little beat <laughs> bass part and then overdub a guitar part. And a 
piano part or something. Um, but you know, I don't consider myself, uh, you know, a master at, at all the different instruments. That's not how I see myself. Uh, I, I consider myself musically inclined. That's how I would put it. And I think that I excel as a guitar player. That's, that's my strong point. And then, you know, and also probably under that would be, you know, singing and, and that sort of thing. And then, by, you know, my records, like you were asking me, I, I play the drums and play the bass. I've always had a love for the bass guitar, and I, I've always listened to the bass in music, you know. And the guys like Bootsy Collins and Stanley Clark and those kind of players, that's the style of, of bass playing that always kind of grabbed me as a young kid, you know. And uh, so when I pick up a bass, I kind of want to emulate those guys, you know. Um, but uh, it just comes, the multi-instrument thing comes out of necessity. A lot of times I'll come up with an idea and it'll be too late at night to call a drummer to come over and play, so I'll jump behind the drums and mic it up. It might take me 15 tries to get get it the way I want it, whereas a real drummer would come in and do it in one or two takes. But you know, at the end of the day, I get what I want, and uh, you know, that's it's fun for me to do that. I enjoy doing that. It's creative, and it's not the only way I work, but it's one way that I like to to make my recordings. This section of the video is going to be focused on arpeggios, and. I use a lot of arpeggios in my soloing, and I have a few different forms that I'd like to share with you. It's a, these are a great way to get around the neck and in and out of complex chord changes. And you're basically what you're doing with an arpeggio is you're playing the notes of the chord. So for example, if you got a G major chord, you're playing the notes that are in that chord, which would be G, B, and D, and then the high octave you know, G again, and then you repeat it, <laughs> like that. So uh, I'm going to start off showing you a very uh, simple form arpeggio, and we'll get into the complicated stuff later as we go on. So let's start out here with, uh, with G major. We're going to do it here starting off on the, on the 15th fret. And our first finger, or second finger rather, we'll play the first note, which will be a G. And then we have B, and then we have uh, D, and then G again. And then back down. So that's a real simple form for a G major arpeggio starting on the low string. Um, while I'm showing you this form, I'll show you the minor variation too because it's, it's a, just a one note difference, which would be the, the, this note here, which is a B. Let's go down a half step to B flat. So you got G major, 